I just spent last night here in Cuba, Missouri, and I'm exploring the town here this morning. I wish we had some sunlight, but I'm just grateful it's not pouring rain again. This really cool metal artwork is called the Osage Trail Legacy Monument. This is a depiction of the Osage tribe traveling west on the Osage Trail. They were described by Washington Irving as the finest looking Indians he'd ever seen. Others claimed they were the tallest race of men at a height of seven feet. They were fierce and courageous, but unfortunately kicked out of Missouri by the white man. The artist had a vivid dream that he would create this, and with the blessing of the Osage tribe, he made it happen. They really appreciated being included in how this would look because they said they usually aren't consulted at all. That's a domesticated wolf pulling the sled. That particular canine type went extinct because of white settlement. The baby is on a cradle board which would flatten the back of its head, which didn't affect them mentally, and some tribes even considered a flat head to be attractive. The white man would even call those tribes flatheads. This is the Wagon Wheel Motel here on Route 66 in Cuba, which is still in business and has been since 1938. You could fill up your gas tank here like we just saw at some restaurants on Route 66. It was $3 a night for two people back then. I'm glad this was kept up unlike that hotel in Litchfield. Of course, it's made of stone, which probably makes things easier. Unlike the chain motels today, during Route 66 heyday, every motel was unique. Not just motels, every business would have been unique along this route before chains. This cottage style building doesn't look it, but it was a gas station at one time. It was built in 1932 during the Great Depression, owned by Paul Carr, whose wife died and left him with a young daughter to raise. He decided that this corner on Route 66 was a good spot for a gas station. So he got a loan with a handshake, no paperwork, thanks to his family's reputation. Paul Carr built it himself and expanded it into an auto dealership later on. Looks like it's a restaurant now. Here we're seeing why Cuba is called Mural City. I'm gonna drive around and find some more murals. This is a great way to give little slices of history without being in a museum. Some of these depict the very early days of Missouri, when the French were here trading furs with the Osage tribe. People living their daily lives. Other murals depict industry in the area, in agriculture. And then on to Civil War depictions. Missouri was right on the dividing line between the North and the South. Looks like a state fair. This shoe store has something special inside. We saw a statue of the world's tallest man in Alton, Illinois, Robert Wadlow. This shoe store has his size 37 AA shoes in a glass case. The original owner of the shoe store bought them for promotional purposes. He said he paid an arm and a leg for them. Speaking of giant things, this was the world's tallest rocking chair but lost that title when it was unseated, excuse the pun, by a rocking chair in Illinois. Camper van for scale. There's a Stonehenge in Missouri, believe it or not. They call it Stubby Stonehenge because it's a tinier version. Now, it would have taken years to carve the stone for the real Stonehenge, but thanks to technology, this was built in a month.
This is what they teach here at Missouri University in the Science and Technology Department. The 160 tons of granite were cut with high pressure water jets that are usually used for mining. So these stones were cut with water. Imagine that. Your destination is on the left. The Totem Trading Post has been in business on Route 66 since 1933. Back in the day, it was a mom and pop store, a gas station, and a restaurant. Love that sign. That's Americana right there. Now it sells souvenirs and antiques. Looks like somebody is living in the RV. They probably just open the place when they feel like it. This place used to sell sugar-cured bacon in burlap bags and corn whiskey in mason jars. Jukebox. 1950s, maybe? I read that the couple that owned this place in the 1970s had three sons die in a car accident, and then the couple was in a car accident themselves, and she ended up in a wheelchair. Maybe this place is cursed, or it was just a family of really bad drivers. GPS just called this the Route 66 Trail of Tears. This is Jerome, Missouri. We're looking at a monument built by one man. It's a memorial of the Trail of Tears, which refers to Native Americans being forced off their land in the area and sent west. According to Larry Baggett, who built this, his house up on the hill is on the Trail of Tears. Larry claimed he was visited by ghosts of Native Americans who still walked the trail. 4,000 Native Americans died walking the trail. Starvation, disease, exposure. A spirit told Larry that the wall he built blocked the spirits walking the trail, so Larry built stairs for them. He said the spirits were quiet after the stairs were built. This is Larry Baggett's self-portrait sculpture. He passed away in 2003, but the current owners do try to keep this place from deteriorating. A folk art treasure on Route 66. Uranus, Missouri.
I've been wanting to see this place for a long time. I get a kick out of their toilet humor. They have a fudge factory. Their motto is, the best fudge comes from Uranus. A lot of this is geared towards kids. Everybody knows kids love toilet humor. Circus Sideshow Museum. That sounds very interesting. Zoltar the Fortune Teller. What are you waiting for? Come on over. For a small fee, Zoltar will give you a wealth of wisdom. Despite the poop humor, this is one of the classiest gift shops I've ever seen. Circus Sideshow Museum. The hostess said her tattoos are real. Perfect job for her here. Two-headed goat. Unicorn pig. Siamese turtle. All animal birth defects. and human birth defects. Cringy that these were entertainment. Robert Wadlow, we meet again. We saw his statue in Illinois, in the shoe store with his gigantic shoes. The top of my head is at his hip. It would be a neck ache if you had to converse with him while he was standing. I didn't know they had monkey races at the circus. Too funny. Before we leave Uranus, there's a muffler man here. He's golf themed for a miniature golf course. Now we're going to be heading southwest on Route 66, Missouri.